Hey everybody, Rebels of Cloud 9 here, and today I'm going to be building from Sweet Models the 1 144 scale A5M4. Um, this was the predecessor to the Zero Fighter, and uh, this uh, particular Zero was flown by Saburu Sakai, which I'll get to in a moment. This kit was supplied by uh, Greg at SeeTheFish.net, so you can go check out his channel. Thanks again. Um, for sending this awesome kit. I've never built one of these sweet models, but I've really wanted to, and uh, yeah, now I get to. So it comes in just a plastic bag, and uh, before I get to the kit components really quick, guys, I was mulling over in my mind how I was going to do this, because it is such a tiny model, and my camera cannot pick up on uh, high definition detail, really close up, and stuff like that. Heck, it can't even pick up on high definition detail anymore, and the Anton Model Show was a good example of that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my old slideshow videos. I'm just going to do a quick, 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 quick uh, inbox review here because, again, I can't pick up on all the details. You can go to my blog. I've posted everything that comes in the kit there on my blog at rebelsofcloud9.blogspot.ca. At least I think it's Blogspot. Uh, they may have changed the name again on me. But you can go to the you can go to the Rebels of Cloud 9 main page here just by clicking on the little Rebels of Cloud 9 below. And there will be a link on the main page there to the blog, so you can go there, or I'll post the link down below. So, just taking a quick look here, you guys may recall I built the Hobby Boss A5M a couple of years ago in 72nd scale. That was also a new release. This little one here has actually more detail crammed in it than that 72nd scale kit. The detail is absolutely wonderful. It's amazing what they've pulled off in such a tiny kit beautiful detail in the engine, you have recessed panel lines, not much for cockpit detail, it's just a seat, but uh, very, very amazing detailed little kit for just the first sprue. Uh, the next part here is a clear parts, and we have this super clear um, windscreen here. You can actually read through the windscreen. It is so clear and tiny, it's amazing. Uh, the best surprise of the whole kit for me were the cartograph decals. I was wondering who, who was going to do the decals. Cartograph down on the bottom. Got excited. Um, you look at the, the quality of the print. is absolutely amazing. There's some incredibly tiny little stencils in here. In particular, G. They're just these two little dots. Absolutely amazing uh, quality in these. So those are going to be very nice to use. Um, I believe these are decal instructions. We have this sweet little cat mascot there at the top. And here, this is my favorite part. This is the one thing I was looking for when I built the Hobby Boss one, is what does Saburu Sakai's A5M look like? Um, huge fan of Saburu Sakai. He was the top ace of Japan that survived World War II, and I actually read his novel here. Uh, fantastic book if you haven't read it. It's absolutely amazing. He talks about his exploits here with the A5M. Um, beautiful decaling guide. You shouldn't have any problems with these. Um, and again, it's in color. So, and they don't exactly have any colors to pick, but you just use your best, uh, best guess in there. So, I'm just going to use the same colors I used on the other one for that. And uh, very easy to read, comprehensive, uh, you know, instructions here. So. Unfortunately, the only thing I can say as a fault is it is written 100% in Japanese, so there's some things in here I don't know if I'll be able to pick out. But they are, again, very, very well um, detailed and descriptive, like uh, a lot of the other kits, so you shouldn't have too much of a problem trying to find out what's going on here. So that is it, guys. Like I said, I'm going to do a slideshow with this one, and I'll be back with a, a final review and evaluation of the kit, so I'll see you when I'm done.
right, everybody, it's finished. Finally done. Uh, spent quite a long time working on this thing, on and off. Um, you know, probably could have had it done sooner, but uh, yeah, just life gets in the way, and what do you do? Um, but, uh, and I just kept kind of snowballing with this project. This was a really terrific kit. Um, you know, if you. If you're a big fan of these sweet models and you like the 1144th scale, this is definitely a kit you're going to want to start adding into your collection. It's beautiful. Um, it's it's basically flawless. I don't think I found anything of a flaw with this kit. Like in like everything fit perfectly. Um, things just went together exactly the way they were supposed to. I don't think I had to do any trimming anything like that that you you don't you know you figure you'd normally have to do it just everything went together really well the detail is incredible um, you know they packed a ton of detail into this little kit the engine looks really great you know the the windows are very very clear um, recessed panel lines the detail on that looks pretty good have to make mention of the decals the decals were the second best cartograph decals I've ever used uh, I was really worried about the white band here on the side of the fuselage. Um, you know, about that not conforming. I used Temia Mark Fit Strong, and uh, I came back like five minutes later and I could just press them into the seam. I uh, came back an hour later, it perfectly matched into the recessed panel lines. It was awesome. Um, the only ones that were better than this, as far as cartograph decals go, would be the ones for the Airfix P51D. Um, that was the only one that was that was better. These were terrific decals. So I decided I wanted to put it on a display base, which is something I usually do when I'm working with a one one forty fourth scale project. Simply because it's nice to you know you just pick them up like that instead of picking up the model. Um, and it's a little bit fun uh, for me to just make this little base here. So my idea was to make this little you know, section here with the sand on it and the grass, but, you know, I began looking into books and things like that and found these uh, structures here that they used to build, and originally these were going to be sandbags, but I couldn't get the epoxy to quite mold properly. Um, I was using the Tamiya epoxy, uh, again, green stuff is just a bit better, and uh, I, I just couldn't get it to work, so I was looking through my books and I found these barricades that they used to build. They used to come out to about here though. But I wanted this to be grass. So this is just a small barricade that they've, you know, built here. And I used some really, really thin I don't even know what this is for. This is something for kitchens that I scrapped from somewhere else. It's just incredibly thin uh wood here. And um yeah, I made this little barrier out of it. And then made these little braces over it and uh, filled it in with the Tamiya sand. Um, again, that's this stuff here. This is the texture paint. Fantastic stuff. This is the large bottle. Um, absolutely, absolutely fantastic stuff. Really, really fun. Um, although, use, a, use an old brush because it actually, it'll actually ruin it. So, I've got a special brush for that now. Um, I mean, yeah, it was just adding all these little details in here. I wanted to add these. I had this idea that maybe they're refueling the drop tank. So I, I left the drop tank off, and my next step was to find some uh, little gas um, containers. And uh, began searching around. I actually found some in the spares. They were a little too big. I happened to be going into Calgary, and I found this bag of these N-scale white metal... Uh, barrels so I bought those instead I'm really really glad I did so I made this little hose here and there's a fueling pump also scratch built this little cart here uh, that was just a couple pieces of styrene and for the wheels I used this rocket I can't remember what kit this ever came off of but I cut off the tail and then I just went ahead and cut these little wheels out of it glued them on the side there and then glued the drop tank in there so they're refueling it I just added this crate here on the side because I happened to find that and uh, I thought, eh, heck, that'll look pretty good, I think. Uh, as far as the grass goes, I used flock grass, so it's this really spongy stuff. 
added some more spongy bushes and then I used static grass to make these kind of big bushes uh, you know wherever and I quite like it uh, painting the aircraft was a bit tricky I used flat aluminum from testers it's enamel and uh, that was that was again a bit tricky because I coated the model three times with future and still the mineral spirits got through and actually erased some of the silver so I had to go back and repaint that and then distress it so you know it blended in with the model so that, that was a bit of a trick to it. Uh, masking off the tail here, I thought that was going to be the most difficult part because it's at an angle and I just, you know, I was just being super careful about it and ended up getting the angle. Really, really happy about that. Uh, then I painted on all the little details on here. Um, you know, for the underside here, I left the bomb rack or the um, drop tank rack on here. I weathered up some little exhaust streaks there on the bottom and uh, added the tail hook and I'm quite happy with that and, and it has this really you know dull look to it it's really dirty and that's not exactly what I was going for to begin with but in the end of it all I'm just gonna leave it like I kinda like this dirtier look now you know it really has this you know used and abused look that these fighters actually went through you know, really long periods of um, uh, of usage. So I was the last thing I was going to do was add some figures into it. I found from Bren Gun Models they make one one forty four scale Japanese pilots. And they look really good. The only problem with it is is they're about ten bucks for two little figures, and another ten dollars for shipping. It's not really worth it for me. Uh, that's, a, that's a bit much. Uh, I also looked around for, to find something I could use as a crew. I was actually going to have a crew, you know, manning all this equipment here of refueling the, the drop tank. Again, I looked around and looked around. I couldn't find anything that fit just what I was looking for. You know, you could cut and paste figures and stuff, but at this small scale, it's really, really hard to do. Um, so I'm just going to leave it. And if there's a day that comes where I actually find the figures that I want, uh, I'm going to go ahead and buy them. And I'm going to add them onto this and, you know, further up this little miniature diorama. But I'm really, really happy with how this turned out. This was a such a fun kit. Really, really fun. The only thing I added onto the airplane itself uh, is the uh, seat belts in there. They were just photocopied. I And I, I just took some of the uh, tam Tamiya weathering powder. I used the sand here. And I just painted the sand onto the paper made this perfect tan looking seat belt because I knew if you looked inside here like when you're looking inside here like right now you can see the seat belts and that's all you're gonna see inside there and that's just enough detail that I wanted to include that in the kit so big thanks to Greg at stevethefish.net he's the guy who supplied me with this kit thank you so much man this was such a fun project to get to put together I'm really happy with the end result I'm I had a lot of fun doing this little kit and I uh, can't wait to do more of these in the future they're they're absolutely terrific so this one is going to actually I'm thinking of just keeping it here on the front of my desk just whoop, over there on the top of my desk so I can look at it for a while I just had so much fun doing this kit and it's Saburo Sakai's uh, A5M so that is the biggest bonus of all <laughs> So, thanks again, man, and thanks everybody for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, be bringing you guys more models in the near future. This is Rebels of Cloud 9. If I haven't taught you anything, at least you've learned what not to do. I'll see you guys later.